All right, so I want to make a quick video on how to just basic do the basics as far as uh, RS Logic 5000. This will be RS Logic 5000, just bait to how to start a program, how to basically the, the initial setup, and if you happen to want to use emulator, that is what I'm using. Uh, this would be done on uh, uh, RS Logic 5000 version 20, and we'll be using the same thing on on the uh, RS Logic's Emulate 5000. So real quick, we'll go ahead and open 5000. And I have version 13 through 20.04. 20, so that's currently the platform that I'm on. Uh, this is not limited to that platform, so don't feel like it is. First and foremost, you want to go in and click Add New. When you're in Add New, you're going to have a lot of selector uh, types and stuff like that as far as your processor type. So if you were using a uh, L72 or something like that, you know, in, in real life instead of an emulator, then you would click the L72. Um, if you're having to use, you know, and you, you kind of get the point, if you're, you're using the 6 series, uh, then you would put the 6 series in. In our instance, we're going to be using the emulator, which I believe is at the very bottom. Yeah. So, and you can also, uh, you know, do some drive logic stuff too, but that's uh, not what we're going to do here. We're going to do the emulator controller. We're going to select our version. Our version is going to be version 20. And uh, you can select your, your slot uh, slot type, which we want to be in slot uh, either 0 or 1, which in this case 1 is fine. Um, you can do your uh, security authorization. If you want to have security authorization just to a specific group or a computer or something of that nature, then that's completely different. Um, you can do that, though. You can select your... your, uh, your uh, chassis size, um, whether you're using a 4 slot, 7 slot, 10 slot, uh, 13, 17, or of course uh, down here the more uh, more robust system. So um, in our instance we just don't care, um, we're using an emulator so we'll just put this as uh, RS Logics Five thousand emulation. <clears throat> so with that said, uh, we don't care about redundancy. It's not offered right now. Uh, with the selections that we have, redundancy is not offered. Um, and or we can put it in wherever location you want to put it in. Uh, so if you wanted to change that to uh, your desktop, you could you could put it right on your desktop. Um, in our instance, we're just going to leave it in the default uh, Rockwell's default location. Click OK. At this point, your program will be compiling and it, it'll start uh, with the basis program. So, it, real quick to go over the high points, uh, we put our chassis, our uh, controller, I'm sorry, in our chassis in slot 1. Then uh, it ba basically starts out with, um, you know, you have a default task of a main task. Uh, you have, you know, your basic stuff in here. You don't have, this is all straight from Rockwell. Um, there's no homemade stuff in here. This is all just straight out the box. So, uh, real quick, you know, to go over the uh, properties of it, you can see that we're on version 20. Uh, we're on the emulation controller that we put in. Our processor name is what we put in in the original setup, and we can change that if we wanted to because we haven't downloaded. But for our instance, we're going to leave it alone. Uh, then we'll come back and we will open up the emulation. So now um, in the RS Logics emulate software, the RS emulation 5000, we're going to put a processor in slot uh, slot one. So this would be in slot one and no, it don't matter. You can change the memory size if you want to. So if you have a big program you're doing, you can change the memory size, and that will help you as far as like uh, just you know having. It depends on really your PC and, and what your PC can take. But uh, when you're emulating something, you definitely want to have um, you want to look at your your processor memory size. Uh, 
but for this instance we're going to use default and for most cases you will use default okay so now that we have our processor uh, in slot one we want to go ahead and what we'll do is we can click who active and in who active we want to go to the a b underscore b b p uh, slash one that's our virtual chassis so the virtual chassis is uh, is basically your emulator uh, your RS Logics emulator 5000 chassis monitor that's what that is so when you go down you'll click basically you will click slot one which we just added and you can click download now when you download this is going to be like any other type of processor you down to or download to um, it's going to just come up and act like a normal download uh, it's going to come up with program remote program you can click in program run uh, and everything's online and to prove that you can you're going to come you know you can come in here and and write a, a, a small little uh, code just to, just to watch it run so we'll put uh, test timer and then we'll put it like I don't know two seconds remember 5,000 has the uh, has the milliseconds and thousands so so one thousandths equals one second yeah that well, I should should look at that okay so with the done bit thought I selected that okay so Okay, so you can see it running. This is a natural system, um, and this is basically how to uh, initially set up a program, uh, initially set up how you want to do it. Now, what you can do, uh, preferably, I like to add periodic tasks instead of the, the the continuous task. If you look at this task right here, it is a, a continuous task, which basically can be done for small applications but you, you really don't have any timing control um, you're basically at the mercy of your processor so what I like to do is add uh, periodic tasks so I'll put like uh, task let's see like uh, 25 and then what I'll do is being this is corresponds to 25 milliseconds so I want to keep the name in conjunction with the actual periodic scan rate uh, why did I do that uh, let's see probably because it doesn't like the number first and then at this point then you can click uh, main you always want to have a main And in our case, we can keep it the same, you know, you can keep it the same thing. You can put, uh, uh, let's see, properties, and we'll put main task. Come in here, and you want to put your routines in there. So we'll put main and then we'll put uh, running uh, let's put uh, let's put laddered testing and I, I'm going to show you the difference in that this timer and this timer <clears throat> so real quick we want to come in here and when you add a new task you want to in the main task you want to open that up and hit properties and in configuration you want to select your main and when you select your main and hit apply you'll see that it shifted up over here now it shifted up over here and that's basically telling you that that's your main task so at this point 
even if we added something here like say for instance we added another timer so if we added one more timer and uh, let's make this uh, I don't know 75 right oh sorry all right uh, periodic Okay, so let's make this default at 70, no, not 75, because we've got 25. Let's do 80. And let's do, let's make this a different tag. Let's, <clears throat> I, want, I want to illustrate the, the timing scheme. So let's do testing fit. And change that to examine on. So, real quick, if I press this right now, it won't do anything. And the reason it won't do anything is because we have not taken our main and tied in our JSR to our, our jump to subroutine to our ladder testing. So, we'll do that real quick. Just type in JSR. Take it to your ladder testing. And when you come to ladder testing, you'll see this. Now you'll be able to, to work. Now you'll be able to, everything is, is actually scanning through the process now. But it's scanning at 25 milliseconds, so keep that in mind. So you see how this accumulation timer did not, okay, so the way it scans, it, it did 20, 25 milliseconds at a time. So, if we would have stopped it at 75, it would have stopped at 75. But being we stopped it at 80, it did not actually hit the done or hit the, uh, it accumulated over 80. I should say that. So, let's do this. To show that, illustrate that point. You see how that just stopped absolutely perfect. And this is because of the scan rate. Now, if I did the same thing up here, and let's say this, let's change this to, again, examine on, change this to continue test timer bit, and this is just a bit, I'm toggling on and off. Okay, so what you're going to see here is being it's two, uh, two seconds. It's still overshot, but you see how, how this is completely, it's not really as accurate as this one was. And so, for instance, let's do this. Let's do 25. And... 20, stopped at 25 milliseconds. So even if I did that higher, even if I said the same exact thing as my periodic task, let's see what that does. Exactly perfect. Okay, so in the reason I want to illustrate this, the difference between a periodic task, our periodic task right here, and a continuous task, which you come as default, is the, the benefits of a periodic task is that you get proper timing. So if you're using anything that is really time can, time uh, critical, and there's something that you you know you want to have really good timing on, um, and not have to use, uh, you're not really at the point where you're using server registration or stuff like that where it's like an absolute time, but you still want to have proper timing and you don't want to question your program, then it's best to go periodic, um, and and that helps with scan rates. It helps on anything you do. Because you can add another task in here that says um, task uh, set 75 milliseconds, or you can put it at whatever you want to, 200 milliseconds. It really doesn't matter. Um, the the point is, it's going to it's going to uh, basically scan at that rate.
So we'll put main task. Main task already exists. Let's see. Uh, okay. And then come back in here, add your, your main. And make sure you tie your task. So this is your task level. This is your task. Make sure you go to properties and tie in your main. Okay. Well, real quick, I just wrap that up. Um, I just want to show you how to make a good program or a real quick program. Uh, with RS5000 and uh, see if that helped you out. Alright, thank you for your time and uh, hopefully you like this and we'll have more to come. Alright, thanks.